it's an immense achievement. Um, and so you've got to take your hats off to them. I, I don't buy into all this, you know, the way they play the game and what have you. I think that's a load of, load of rubbish. The beauty of our game is that it appeals to all shapes and sizes and it also appeals to all coaches who want to take pride in whatever facets of the game new the box take huge pride in the way they play the game you know the little intricacies and their set piece and their kick chase game um and up north there has been quite a bit of negativity around you know we're watching turgid affairs on the rugby field it's not as open but that's the spring box you know that they take huge pride in the way they play that game and it's it's a winning formula and uh, yeah I, I have to give a cr- huge credit to the box in, in sticking by that and ultimately when you look at how many tries they scored versus the lions they scored more so as much as you want to uh, <laughs> throw throw those comments into the ring, I, I think it's quite unfounded. But Jamie, Jamie, I think you know on a, on a different forum that, that you and I spoke as well. Um, you know, I think for both teams, the 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 preparation has been very different. You know, I think we need to acknowledge that. And and then you you know you know when when your preparation is not the way that you that you want it to be, you know you can't you can't play the perfect game that you might aspire to to play. So. You then play a, a kind of game plan that can that can give you success, you know. And and if if, if that is what you are chasing, you, you you're chasing a series to be able to win a series. So how do you do it? Um, what kind of game do you play where your chance of winning is better, taking into account the amount of time that you have to prepare? And and I think it was never going to be an expansive series then because of all of that. And um, and like I said, the you know the the previous conversation you you and I had. I, you know, I think the, the excuses will, will always be there. It, it, it didn't matter which way the series went. You know, there would always be a bit of a bit of bent and I, and I suppose some excuses of wh- why we couldn't couldn't win. Um, you know, depending on which side you sit on, and and that to me in a way, you know, adds to it as well because it it means so much to everyone. So um, you know, let's let's celebrate the positive. Let's celebrate the fact that we that we saw it and experienced it and. Um, yeah, and then kind of move on, I suppose. I suppose in terms of maybe the rugby on display, and I know Jamie, you're not you're not going to like this part, but I know it, it, a lot of people have said that it probably has to go down as one of the most boring series of all time. But there was one man who threatened to rip up that assessment, and that man was Finn Russell. Ryan, how incredible was he when he came on? He just seemed so calm. Yeah, that's Finn though. That's Finn. Like no rugby for what five weeks comes on the big stage with the biggest grin on his face, high five everyone as he runs on the field, 11 minutes into a test or whatever it was. And you, that's exactly Finn, like just calm as anything and enjoys his rugby. And he showed that when he came on, didn't he? He was good. He was really good. I know he had a couple of dodge ones and it was a bit of a weird one, the um, Warren Gatlin interview after, afterwards where they mm. asked how well Finn played and he, he started just pulling out all the things he did wrong, which was a strange one. Um, you know, other than that dodgy left-footed kick up the middle of the pitch, he was uh, he was pretty good for a guy that hadn't played rugby for so long in such a big occasion. So, but that's Finn Russell for you, and uh, I just wish we got to see a little bit more of him during during the series. Were you worried for him when he seemed to make that head-on-head contact with Colby? Like, could that tackle have been carded? It, it could have, of course, it could have because of the rules and the way everything is. But when you really look at it, Colby's pretty much on his knees as as they make the contact. So. Yeah, I, you know, it was it was a difficult one, wasn't it? It was a difficult one. It could have definitely gone the other way, and I did have my heart in my mouth. I was thinking, oh no, please. Now, if, if, I, if I can add to that, so so like, look, the the the, the first thing is it, it's player safety, right? So that that's why we've got all of these sanctions in in place. And and if you kind of they kind of start on okay, it's head on head, so you start red card. That, that's that, that's the entry level. And then they kind of work it down on mitigating circumstances, and then you bring it down to a yellow. So, so I think it it possibly could have been a yellow at worst, in in my opinion. But I am so happy that it was only a penalty because of because of the way, um, you know, the, the tackle happened. And I think, you know, if if you kind of put if you kind of put a green jersey on it, I would have I, I thought it would have been harsh if it if it was a yellow card. So, um, you know, I I, th- I think it's getting that balance right in. Player safety, first of all, we need to look after our players, you know, and, and, and we don't want those head-on-head uh, collisions. But then again, a bit of common sense and a bit of, you know, taking taking the tackle and all the variables of a, of a rugby tackle into account. And um, yeah, 
I mean, I was I was a little bit concerned as well that maybe it would would be a, a card and that would really have affected the the result. Um, so you know, from from my point of view, I'm happy with the way it, it turned out. I, I think that was straight after his dodgy left footed kick up the middle of the field. He went running off, chasing after. Yeah, him. he did. He <laughs> tried to rescue it, didn't he? <laughs> he kicked it straight to Cheslin Colby, and if he could right there in trouble. I just, I love the freedom he plays with. He, he's classic kind of anti structure player. I'm sure he can play to structure, great, but he plays what he sees. And, you know, very rarely do we have outside halves in the, in uh, certainly at test level doing that. Everything's quite a rigid game plan. And this guy comes on, first action with the ball, the defence has come high, he puts a little kick pass. that we haven't seen all, all the Lions series, uh, certainly the Test series. Um, had the confidence to do that and back his skill set was was pretty special. Especially, you know, when the stakes are that high. Do you think Amy, he, did he, well, didn't he? He did, it, yeah. Do you think it helped the fact that he came off the bench and didn't start? Because sometimes when you're the starting 10, you, you almost, you know, all the pressure, you... You know the, the the game plan and uh, and kind of the structure get get forced into you. Whereas when you come off the bench, you you do play with a well, in my mind at least, with a with a little bit more freedom. I, I think it actually does in his favour. Hundred you, percent. You've relegated Finn Russell to the Scottish bench now for the next decade. Yeah, <laughs> but you got think- Adam Hastings for that. But even in the, say in the preparation though, with Finn, I mean, would the set, like would the Springboks kind of have been preparing for Dan Berger to be on until say 60 minutes and then Finn comes on, what is it, 10 minutes into the game? Like that's going to kind of ruffle their feathers a little bit as well, isn't it? Like if they're yeah, expecting they, him yeah, on for the would, last they 20. Wouldn't have, they wouldn't have prepared for the game that he was going to play. They would have, that first half, definitely, they would have been expecting them to play the way they finished the second test. You know, these high yeah. balls and putting a lot of pressure on them kick-wise and then suddenly Finn comes on and boys are putting the ball at the back. He's those little crossfield kicks he's doing. So it definitely changed it up very early on, which I think they had to adapt to, didn't they? The amount wow. of momentum he helped create against the ball, he caused the box huge problems. Like multi-phase attack, the Lions have hardly made any metres against the box in those first two tests. Like I'd hate to know how many carrier metres they made. We just couldn't get our big runners into the game. Finn Russell comes on, I think within one passage of play, they make more metres moving forward because the attacks the line is a huge running threat. I don't know about you, Jean, but I was watching it thinking, geez, South Africa are on the ropes here. This could be three, four tries, you know? No, 100%. And, and, and also, you know, from a preparation point of view, defensively, defensively, you, you prepare because you, you think that you're going to face a certain kind of structure. You know, now a guy comes on and he's literally playing what he's seeing in front of him. So he's having the options to play inside, outside, kick, whatever, and then he's executing where he's seeing the space. And, you know, from a defensive point of view, you, you can never cover everything. So there's always space somewhere. It's being able to get the ball into that space. And, and he was, you know, he was, he was able to do that. And it feels as if the players around him, you know, could feel that as well. So they were running off him, you know, and, 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 and kind of, you know, wanting to join the party. Jamie, did he prove that Gatland should have been more creative um, and attacking in his tactics throughout the series? Yeah, well, this is this is a question that's it's almost impossible to answer. Look, Warren wanted, I think, wanted to fight South Africa um, with a South African game plan. I think he he knows when he's come close to beating South Africa or beating South Africa in the past, you have to outbox the box uh, if you can have a chance of doing that. So. Again, it's set piece. We've seen how successful the driving more was on a couple of occasions um, and the kit chase game and, and just kind of squeezing teams. So, you know, I think I think in hindsight, when we do look back and maybe when Warren does look back, that we've missed opportunities. There's no doubt about that. You watch that last um, test and how on earth that was 10-6 at half time. That's a miracle result for the box because it should have been 20-25-6. Um, and, uh, you know, the Lions created opportunities. And as much as we talk here about game plans and not attacking and what have you, those missed. I think there were two tries the Lions should have walked in. Obviously, those are two on one with Liam and Josh. You know, Tom Curry has a p- probably got a poor error in that mall, isn't it? That mall is going over. Um and they're both potentially fourteen, you know, potentially fourteen point swing. Like, and it, that's the thing. When when that halftime whistle blew ten six, it it was just right. It was on the wall for me because I just don't think the Lions took advantage of their dominance in that first half. 